A Gotland, a not so small island in the middle of the Baltic Sea, on which, after losing the Danish throne, Eric I of Pomerania fled, which quite late in life, 62 years old. He went through a kind of midlife crisis and he said he was all fuck. He just becomes a pirate. Arr. Eventually, he met a beautiful red haired pirate, which brought him to this life. We will never know what it really was like. Hello, guys, Lucas here. As Eric was quite a clever ruler, all right, maybe not smart enough because he lost power over three countries, but he was smart enough before he became a pirate, get what he can from the estates. That's why he gave a monopoly on wool. He increased his relations with other countries. He wanted something to influence the relationship with the Pope. From the nobility, he stated that what if he brings out a nice general uh, from merchants. How he hated merchants. He took the money because why not? Maybe they'll build him a free ship or they'll give you an admiral. As he didn't have any cheaper advisors. So he said he'd do missions for the estate. For example, providing him with a cheaper military advisor. Losers! As he doesn't like Danes. And it so happens that Poland does not like them either. Well, he insulted them. He insulted them a lot. Let's take additional prestige from the merchants. Because why not? Let's also sell the rest of the land, which we basically don't have anyway. Eric took all the favors from the estate he could. He hired a cheaper advisor. And of course, a diplomatic advisor. This allowed him to establish closer relations with Poland. Much closer. After all, we have a common enemy here. After becoming the Pirate Republic, all our states have disappeared like most of our commitments because unfortunately the loan had to be repaid but we got Carrick as well as the alliance with Poland it was also more preserved instead of an estate we now have three factions the buccaneers the smugglers and the captains because we are a republic every four years we also have the election of our new captain or ruler no come on captain ruler merchant ships under eric's command they chose to solicit voluntary duty in lubeck and the rest of the fleet set off along the entire baltic coast to make raids on nearby ports obtaining of course the money left there by grateful citizens and attract new sailors willing to work in our navy oh yes the entire baltic coast raided by us He's rallying the coast again and that reminds me of something. Meanwhile, our chests, our sailors, we're all full, only unfortunately, as pirates, we made a lot of enemies. Let's build one barge for the money we earn because we needed to complete the mission. And of course, seven galleys. Yes, we will exceed the limit, but it's not terrible. Eric knew it was quite an important aspect of his life on Gotland. He will develop this province as much as possible, which he did. He developed infrastructure, expanded commercial port. He also adopted the naval doctrine. No, no, not commercial. Looting ships and selling them to other countries. Who won't be pissed at him enough? What led to his bankruptcy? What? Unfortunately, why? Take the path of direct piracy. We can't privateering yet. I mean, we can, but to be honest, I'm a little scared because it will prevent us from entering into alliances with any country other than Poland. So for now, we'll create a pirate council. And our Eric raises the pirate flag for 25 years. It is becoming the terror of the Baltic Sea. Well, maybe not scary yet, but we got claims all over Denmark. And admittedly, my goal will not be to win all these claims because I want to stay on the islands after all. At least me as me. We hire a naval advisor. We are increasing support from captains, which gives us quite nice bonuses to fight. And with the help of Poland, we invade the Danes and their capitals to be exact. It is an island, after all. The most important thing for us now is to sink the fleets of all our opponents one by one. We can't let one... Wow, <clears throat> a big battle. Also, see that we are capturing ships and we return captured ships to our ports. Those are damaged because they are the weak link in our fleet. And we are mothballing him right away. The Order's fleet also fell into our hands. What three new galleys? I managed to get the Norwegian fleet. And here it is possible that we will get some gems in a moment. Oh no. Uh, unfortunately, we have to withdraw from the battle because the Danish fleet has arrived. Well, I didn't foresee that Poles wouldn't be able to handle it. I took a little risk and it paid off. I sent the Order Swedish fleet and the Holstein fleet to the bottom. Literally, how many ships have we captured? And I think I overdid it a bit. Yeah, fleet made maintenance does the trick but it's time to bring terror to the shores of the baltic sea yes yes was it finally going to work yet we sent some fleets and captured a heavy ship all right we're back with the loot but this time we're sinking some of it and from what i see we can raid the shores again then i think he will sponsor us this war but let's go to strengthening our ships this piracy map is really useful at least i know where to swim now i've definitely won naval dominance by now i sent 24 ships down i only lost two 
I have a feeling that Poland won't be in this war for long. Let's now try to share such point strike with the shield of my fleet. I recruited sailors that have 200% increased landing speed. And unfortunately, during this war, Eric dies. Another pirate takes his place. Let him support the captains better. I must admit, he's a much better sailor. So a bit off top, maneuver is currently the best stat for the fleet because it increases the number of units involved in the battle. And that always gives you a huge advantage. Landing bore home our sailors. It's going to get the whole Danish fleet anyway. By the way, we're in a renaissance right now. We are blockading Lubecka with our ships. And yes, I wanted to conquer this province, but I have yet another idea for it. What we want is for them to pay us war reparations, plus they gave the rest of the money. We're landing on Friesland, who will also pay us tribute. Better yet, let him pay us monthly. And unfortunately, Poland lost the war with the Teutonic Order. Oops, I am now landing on the capital, breaking the walls and storming right away, which is also successful as you can see. Well, I only lost 5,000 soldiers on this assault, but it was worth it because we now have total dominance in the Baltic seas. And we basically cut off the Danish capitals from the mainland. We also sunk the Danes. I won't tell, pretty cool. Another reform is the shortened re-election period or an election. And we make a similar shelling and assault on Konigsberg and we'll be able to get a dancing. 20 days of assault, 5,000 casualties and it worked too. We have it, but not much else really. I end the first war as follows. I'm taking money to pay off my loans. I conquer two provinces and yes, I leave these two islands specially because it will be easier for us to get them in the next war. Lots of losses, fortunately not ours. I'm letting go of Danzig and I'm making it a free pirate harbor. Fortunately, they are not the pirate republic, I guess. Is there any way to check this? I also made Danish culture our main one. That's because I might take the Danish Admiralty at a later stage. Kronenbor, a pirate castle. Ooh, how nice of them. I will be honest, this makes our fleet practically unsinkable at present. And even if I had English culture, the first development from the era, uh, and I know that I could use justification for my wars, all in all, it's a pity that there is no such general expansion to the fleet in this period for us. Uh, I managed to make an alliance with Poland again. And, of course, we want to make it clear that vassals do not participate in our wars. This is super important. I think the next reform, of course, is the establishment of religious institutions. Because our brothers need prayers on these ships. No, they spend so long at sea. And we really do have a spiritual state. And thanks to this, we can take advantage of several privileges. Not to mention it, how quickly we will reform our republic now. I wanted to invade Riga to get her and Lubeck by the way. But I see that I will drag the emperor into this war anyway. So I'll just attack Lubeck directly. What bad could happen? Fortunately, on the seas I have a gigantic advantage. The rest doesn't count. Hmm, they wanted to break through. They wanted to break through and they couldn't. But why can't they go here? Ooh, luckily they can't. I don't know what happened here. Fortunately, this is what war looks like. Many countries are coastal, but with Austria and all the rest of these tiny countries, I'll have to wait about seven years to get out of this war. Fortunately, I can start raising funds for the war again. I will not complain. I won't tell. It looks quite disturbing. Everyone is ready to attack my provinces. And I regret a little that I deleted the fortress here. I'll have to rebuild it before the next war. It means time to choose your first ideas. Yes. I know quite late, I may not surprise you here, but I will play totally standard under the fleet, which is something I've never done in any campaign. So basically, I'm playing pretty non-standard. So this is my first time doing it in EU4, at least for many years. Maritime idea seems to me more useful than naval ones, so we take them as much as possible. And Denmark gives us war reparations plus some money. Haha. Ha. We managed to take this country out of the war. Only this Austria is so reluctant to get out of this war. So there's no way around it here. And finally Austria got out of this war. I only destroyed two armies of them. Literally. These are all the losses I inflicted on them. And it only took me 11 years. We are destroying Lubeck's army now. Of course we do this so that they have nowhere to retreat. The second idea I take is I take infrastructure. I don't know if it will be useful to us. But it will be fun to test it here. We get 10% for development at the end. And our national ideas of Gotland have it too, so we can scale it nicely. Possibly here I also thought hard about spy ideas, because they give us the opportunity to better pirate and catch the ship. Plutocratic can also be a good choice. Let me know what you would choose. And Lubecka, Riga, conquered. We, we release them on a vassal. Although here I expect minor problems with their loyalty. So lightly. Okay, I can't release them on vassals. I absolutely do not.
Okay, I'm not releasing these provinces, but I'm going to do it eventually. Let's sell some captured ships. Time to finish the Danish case. We attack and invade Lolland, but maybe without Polish help, at least for now. Our pirate brother smashes the Danish army this time. No problem. This time he also invades Iceland. Really? Out of reach? Well, good. Let them pay us tribute then. Or can we humiliate them? Alright, tribute is enough. Well, now we have a bit more provinces to pirate. And honestly, I need to get this island. Well, it's time to invade Scotland. Flanders? Where it is? No, they don't interest me. I love destroying the AI army like this. More islands conquered for our pirate brotherhood. I also always earn something on the ships I capture. And now it's time for the reform I've been waiting for a very long time. A war against the world order that gives war against the world CB. So one of the best Casos Bella in this game. In 1493. Of course, there are plenty of other very cool reforms here. For example, we can appoint admirals as our rulers, increase our republic tradition, the better advisors we have, or the black market consortium. I think it's also a very interesting mechanic, like once I, I have to play totally under the smugglers. Look, this is just Cassus Bella's imperialism. Alright, the war for the English Isles. Castile will not answer, okay? Alright, but it will make sense. Not until we develop our technology to the 8th level. It's time to build a flagship. Madam, and here I will take another perk of another. Fleet preventing efficiency plus 25%. That's cool, we pissed off Osmod, but we got the ship. I can finally expand our shipyards, which will significantly increase my fleet. I just had to have the money for it. I already know how I'm going to get this money, right? Well, we deliver shipyards. 73 days to build a new ship. Oh, how cool. The Dutch conquered Norway here, which previously conquered Denmark. And see, Denmark has one province, and it belongs to the Holy Roman Empire now. It doesn't change the fact that I currently have the largest fleet in the world. And I think it's time to use it. Only before that did I release Lubeck as my vassal. And again, you have to remember to signify that they don't take part in our wars because otherwise it will be quite uninteresting. And even before going to war, let us become the fear of the northern seas. I will be honest, Osman in this war, I really did not expect. I attacked this island, of course, because the English won't get here, but they can get here. I really wish I had built a fortress here. I really regret. I can't do it here now. I forgot that Osman is in this war. All in all, I worked against Poland again. Sorry, mm. All right, but it will allow me to get another island in the Baltic, plus a lot of money because I'm not likely to humiliate it. Hey, but Poland as soon as it returned from the Swedes. Look at it, it beats Osman. Is the Ottoman Empire really that weak now? That Poland with two minuses defeats them. All right, the choice of the idea of Poland is at least strange, but it can be. Hey, but look, they are really destroying the Ottoman troops. What of you? Oh, why can I have it? Whatever, I want it. Wow, landing to Lisbon. And I must admit, it would be nice to have this monument, but we can't. Osman wants a white He gathered so hard that he lost half his army. Oh no. Okay, two more islands conquered for us, war reparations and some gold. We're entering the Mediterranean, we'll take Crete first to have a base and I will try to block Constantinople and I'll tell you honestly. Sailors are great for such quick landings. See, I'm coming here. I am landing on Crete. So far my fleet isn't dying by some miracle. Why isn't he dying? Dying but getting repaired. Since when does the maneuver affect this? Wow, we sink the Ottoman fleet or capture it. We'll see. Wow, more ships for us and an even greater chance of catching Okay, I made a little naval blockade, although I may still risk it here. Alright, I'm not taking the entire coast from them, but war reparations plus money are coming from the Ottoman Empire. And we have these islands captured from England. There were some losses. Ooh, Poland paid for these islands. I wonder if Protestantism is good for piracy. We'll see. Fortunately, I don't have many provinces. Nicely, I pirate 30% of the English Channel trade, 30% of North Sea trade. Now I have to figure it out. How to conquer the Mediterranean islands. Should I count as an island in Venice too? I would say English Channel makes us a lot of money from piracy. I must admit that the economic reforms are quite interesting. Or repairing our ships, increased production of naval supplies, or making money catching ships. And to be honest, I'm going for it. Oh my god, what a reward. What a reward. Well, the islands from Tunis conquered after quite a long war. Oh yes, pirate. Italian coasts. There will be quite a bit of money here. Time to choose naval idea. Time for better pirates than those of Rhodes. Finally, we conquer an important island. Well, because basically the entire Mediterranean basin can now be pirated, including Constantinople. Well, here's where we'll get some money. Only 68 in Constantinople alone.
No, I managed to get 72 here. Where is it? Well, to be honest, I'm surprised. How much money is made from pirating trade routes? I have a gigantic fleet, pretty good sailors, and within piracy, well, practically the entire Mediterranean, you would still have to conquer Venice, and he can move on to a new world. And how do you want? And if you like stories of small countries that become big, I recommend you an episode from Japan in which, as a one provincial Oda, I unite Japan and conquer all of China.